Let's talk about the difference between group lessons and individual lessons. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. There's a lot in there. Um, group lessons and individual lessons each have their, their role and purpose. Um, I always think of group lessons as a way to get a large number of people to be incompetent in a very short period of time. Um, an individual lesson is where you have a very small number of people whom you teach to be highly competent over a very long period of time. Um, so my bias is showing there, I, I guess. There, there's a couple of there's a couple of reasons or a couple of uses for for group instruction. Um, it, uh, teaching a group is very helpful in the very beginning when you have a room full of people who don't know which end of the sword hurts and which end of the sword to hold. You know, you can get some broad strokes in to teach them really, really basic gross, you know, like how, how to stand, how, to, how far apart your feet should be. I mean, really, really the gross motor skills. It's nothing, nothing fine in there. And um, for me, I, I, I use that. Uh, I, I use that for the first A2. That's, that's what I teach when I teach a group, group, group of beginners. And these are the these are the basic strokes of you know balance line focus and distance and, and that other stuff. So when you're working with brand new beginners, uh, it's it's a way to disseminate basic information efficiently to a lot of people at once. And if you're into that, that's cool. Um, I, I, I'm not I'm not too into that. And partly because. Uh, uh, out of 25 people in a class, you might have one who's going to continue. For most people, this is not their thing. So I wish there was just an easy way to find that one person and work with them. <laughs> you know? But anyway, um, another time uh, to use group, uh, I'm going to say a group lesson, but group training is when you have uh, a group of homogeneous uh, performers that is to say, advanced students all at about the same level. And so you groove on some kind of group training to go through drills and stuff together. Because they all know the stuff. You're not teaching technique now. They, they've got the technique. Now you're just hammering in spirit and continuing the phrase and toughness and mental discipline and, and those kinds of things. As well as a group unity um, that can be very, very powerful. So... Group training is good with brand new beginners, and it's good with more advanced fighters or fencers, but it's not so hot in the middle. <laughs> it's not a good way to impart those skills to people. It's fine once they know them, but it's not a good way to acquire a skill. Individual lessons. Okay, the individual lesson is the Swordmaster's talk and trade. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. This is the way you teach somebody. You're, you're, you're alone with them. It's just, it's just you and your student. You give them 100% of your attention. You give them 100% of your assessment. You, you, you know, you're focused on them. You can observe every detail of their performance. You can get to know them. So they, they have little tells that you can learn so that you know for that individual person what's too much, what's not enough, when are they bored, when are they working hard, when are they breaking down, all that stuff, that, that's highly individual. Look, every student is a unique individual. And you can't phone in a lesson. you got to be there and be paying attention and be connected to your student and observing every second. And that's why if you're given good lessons, it's, as, it's emotionally exhausting as well as physically exhausting for you because your student has to focus, yeah, but you as a teacher, your focus is at least as hard as a student's focus because you've got to take into account everything, right? It's murder. If you're given good lessons, it's hard work. Uh, it's very satisfying work, but it's very hard work. When I was at the academy, man, we, we would give... You know, 10 lessons a day, 12 lessons a day uh, on some days, you know. 
just grind them out, grind them out, because we're learning technique, we're learning patterns. The quality of those lessons was, you know, not so hot, because we were learning them, learning how to do this, learning how to move, how, learning how to move the blade, learning how to elicit this response, learning how to elicit that response, right? Learning how to get your student to be more bold, learning how to get them to be calm, trying to figure out what they need, you know? But when you're learning to give lessons, you know, you're just learning to give lessons. All the, all the really fine stuff that you want to have with your real students, none of that's there yet. Are you kidding me? I gave a thousand lessons before I gave a good one, <laughs> you know? Um, so, uh, and, and some of those were practice lessons amongst ourselves. You know, in the mornings, we were, there were four of us. So, you know, if we didn't screw around, I could give three individual lessons to each of my fellow students and take three individual lessons, one from each of my fellow students. So, so there's the morning, right? Um, individual lessons, that's the thing. Really, that's the thing. Don't kid yourself. Now, here's the downside. If you're counting on making a living teaching fencing, teaching swordsmanship, I strongly recommend you make a list of places downtown where you can wash dishes for money. If you're giving quality individual lessons, you can't give very many of them every day. And there's a limit to how much money you can charge somebody for a lesson. Yeah, if I, if I could charge people $1,000 a lesson, I could make a living. But anybody out there who can pay $1,000 for a lesson, call me. No, seriously. If you can pay $1,000 for a lesson, call me. Right now. Stop what you're doing. Call me. Um, <laughs> but also, a lot of the people that I enjoy teaching most don't have a lot of bread for anything, let alone fencing lessons. Um, so, giving good quality individual lessons is, is not a way to get rich and retire to the Caribbean. Lots of people give fencing classes because they make more money. And that's why they're doing what they're doing, right? If I have one person for a half an hour lesson, let's say I charge them 50 bucks and, that, and that's a lot. If you, if you are charging 50 bucks, if you're getting 50 bucks for a lesson, I want to move where you live, right? <laughs> so half an hour, $50. You have a class, you can charge each of those people only $10, get 20 people in your class, do the math. It's much more financially rewarding to teach classes than it is to do individual lessons. The only trouble is if you're a teacher, you know damn well in a class you're not teaching shit. It's just for the money. Or if you want to be, if you want to kid yourself, it's to find that one student who's going to be remarkable. Yeah, give me a break. It's for the money. So, since I'm not teaching for money, uh, <laughs> I don't care about that. I, I, I don't like doing classes. It's a waste of my time and a waste of your money. I do individual lessons. That's what I do. And uh, I think I'm pretty good at it. Maybe not great, but I'm pretty good at it. I, I might not be able to make you a, into a great swordsman, but I can sure as hell make you a better swordsman. And that's the best I can do.